Welcome, everyone. My name is Eileen Pennington, and I'm the Senior Gender Advisor with the Asia Foundation's Women's Empowerment and Gender Equality Program. I'm so pleased to be moderating this important panel on the impact of gender norms on women in STEM in conjunction with the Trilateral Summit on Women's Leadership in STEM, which, as you know, has been organized by the Asia Foundation in partnership with the U.S. Department of State and the Middlebury Institute of International Studies. For those of you who may need some help connecting or who would like to access our interpretation services, please refer to the chat for detailed instructions. Next slide. I am joined today by three truly esteemed panelists, all of whom have had distinguished careers in STEM fields. They will be sharing their personal and professional insights on how to transform traditional gender norms in order to ensure that women in STEM can thrive. And we are successfully supporting new generations of young women entering STEM fields. Ms. Yukako Uchinaga has had a distinguished career spanning the tech and policy worlds, including over 30 years at IBM Japan, as well as holding several other corporate leadership positions. She's currently the chair of the Japan Women's Innovative Network, which advocates for diversity in business and society and supports professional women's networks. In recognition of her groundbreaking work, Uchinaga-san is the recipient of numerous prestigious awards, including being named to the Women in Technology International Hall of Fame. Dr. Kangjo Lee is a distinguished scientist and has been a professor at Ewa Uni Women's University since 1984, where she's nurtured generations of young female scholars to enter STEM fields. She is the recipient of numerous prizes and awards, including the, Co the Korea L'Oreal UNESCO Award in 2012. She also served as advisor for science and technology to President Moon of the Republic of Korea. So welcome. And Ms. Ying Worries Lin has had an innovative career at Microsoft, which has already spanned 20 years, including roles in software development, management, and site reliability engineering. She has a strong commitment to helping other women in STEM thrive, including as the co-founder of Level Up Seattle, which is a regional networking initiative serving mid to senior female technical leaders. A warm thank you to all of our panelists for joining us today for this important discussion. And next slide. Before we begin our panel discussion, we've created several polling questions to let us better understand who is joining us today and their interests. You will see several questions with multiple choice answers appear on your screen. Um, and if you don't see it, you can click polling at the bottom right to launch the questions. Please select only one answer for each question. Respond to all questions now and then click Submit. The poll will close shortly and we'll be able to see the results. I'm going to read the questions quickly for the benefit of those using our interpretation services. So question number one, my interest in gender norms in STEM is connected to my role as A, a person working in the STEM field, B, a policymaker, C, a professional working on gender issues, or D, other. Question number two, of the following gender norms that often serve as barriers for women in STEM, I am most concerned about A, lack of networks for women, B, stereotypes that women are not as good at STEM jobs as men, C, the perception that women are not strong leaders in STEM, or D, the belief that women should prioritize their family responsibilities. Number three, I have personally experienced a gender norm that discouraged me from excelling professionally. A, yes, or B, no. And number four, I am joining this discussion from A, Japan, B, Korea, C, the United States, and D, others. So I, I understand, ah, great, the polling's launched now. So while you're taking the time to respond to the poll, I'm going to focus our attention on the issue of how to identify and transform gender norms that are driving the gender gap between men's and women's participation in STEM fields. 
as we all know, gender norms are generally defined, in, and I've, ha I've got it here on the screen, um, as the informal rules, stereotypes, and shared societal expectations that shape how men and women and boys and girls and people of all genders are expected to behave. We know that gender norms are specific to societies and communities, and today we'll be digging more deeply into some of the norms that our three countries share. As the poll on our prior panel, the one that just happened before this one, indicated, the audience believes that social and gender norms have the biggest impact on STEM-related policies, laws, and reg regulations. And that's even more so than advocacy campaigns, government commitments, and the policies of top tech companies. So we know this is a really important topic. It's quite clear that stereotypes still play a big role in deterring girls from going into STEM fields the common societal biases, unconscious or overt, which picture men in STEM jobs and particularly in leadership roles rather than women, has a big impact on girls when they're setting their professional goals, on their families when they're thinking about appropriate vocational roles, and of course on women's self-confidence and their ability to utilize their talents and skills going forward. And meanwhile, in all three of our countries, there's still a big gender gap in terms of unpaid care work. If we look at recent research on housework among married couples, we find that in Japan, married women spend between five and seven times as much of their time on housework as men. And this is similar in Korea, which finds that married women spend between three and five times as much time on housework as men, and in the United States, where married women spend an average of twice as much time on housework as their husbands. So moreover, we know that unpaid care work is rightly getting a lot of attention right now as the COVID pandemic has increased caregiving demands. For example, for parents to help their children with virtual school or the need to support aging family members. And who is bearing the lion's share of this work right now? As Deputy Minister Lee Sung Ho reminded us, and I think we're all waving, um, it, generally speaking, it, it's women. So if we look at our, our poll results, um, we see a very diverse group of people who are joining us. We have a number of people who are working in STEM fields um, and also quite a few professionals working on gender. We have policymakers and, and a big group of other people who have interest in this area. Um, when we asked, you know, of the following uh, gender norms that often serve as barriers, which one are you most concerned about? Um, the top response was the stereotypes, that women just aren't as good at STEM jobs as men. So we'll be digging into that in the coming uh, hour. And when we asked whether you've personally experienced a, a negative gender norm that affected you, um, more than half of you said yes. Um, so we'll be sharing some personal experiences, reflecting on our professional experiences, and really discussing um, uh, discussing where we are with these issues. Um, so with that, I'll just let you know that um, we'll be speaking sequentially, and then we'll be opening up for Q&A. So at any time, you're welcome to add questions that you have for our panelists into the Q&A box, and we'll be sure to get to those when we get to the moderated discussion portion. And now I'll turn the floor over to Yukako Uchinaga. Um, Uchinaga-san is going to share her insights from her long business career and her efforts to strengthen diversity in the workplace through JWIN. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And my name is Uchinaga. I'm so pleased to have a chance to uh, talk about my experience and also our activity in Japan for the Women's Advancement. And next page. So I do not want to talk in detail about my career, but I would like to show the very simplified my career map. And the vertical line is my career going up and down. And also vertical is the, oh, excuse me, horizontal is my age. And when I look over my career, there are three stages. First stage was a very difficult timing. And I worked so hard but I was not in any management position, so that was the very hardest time. And the second stage for me is uh, after the uh, six years of the first stage and uh, 
gov uh, company changed their strategy to help me a lot to moving up my career. But that was very, also very tough timing because I got so many experiences. And third stage is now I'm now getting a real company leader. So these kind of the three stages I would like to uh, talk about as my experience. Next page. First, my, uh, first stage is the biggest issue for me was the, the role of Labor Standard Act in Japan. This Labor Standard Act means the, uh, in case of the women engineer or women uh, employee, we could not work more than two hours overtime in one day. And for one year, our overtime limitation is 120 hours. So if we or I would like to work longer than these limitations, that was a violation of the governmental law, oh, excuse me, and governmental law. So then that the company is very sensitive to follow, to keep this kind of law. And then finally, I could not get any kind of exciting job because of these kind of limitation, especially in a development organization. I joined IPM as a development engineer. So then development organization, we are always challenging the new idea, new concept, new architecture. And then almost all employees are working so hard. But uh, in my case, two hours overtime, after two hours overtime, my manager said to me, hey, Uchinaga-san, you have to back to your home. So then in order to resolve this issue, my idea is after two hours overtime, I hide in the ladies' room. And then my boss is going back to his home. And after that, I sneaking out my ladies' room and start working. But it did not so work so long time. And then I ask my boss, my boss, let me be a manager. And then I should not worry about any overtime limitation. But anyway, that was very difficult timing. And because of this Labor Standard Act, the co uh, organization executive is always give me the unwilling job or not exciting job. Because if I work so hard, it makes a violation of the Labor Standard Act. So this was a very big barrier for me and also for the for company itself. And also last one is the biggest issue for me was old boys network. Even I try to work so hard, I communicate with them, but there are um, huge unspoken rules within my organization, which is not only IBM Japan, but also entire Japan. So unable to understand unspoken rules. So that is also excluding me from the uh, network or teamwork and so on and so on. Next, please. So anyway, the first stage was a very struggling timing for me. But fortunately, after six, uh, six years, six years later, and the com company changed their strategy they focus on the women's advancement, especially US, U.S. company headquarter asked Japan IBM to change to focus on the women's advancement. And then I got the very strong help from the uh, company. And also that the very uh, uh, fortunately, I got uh, foreign executive male managers. He's coming from the IBM Rochester. And he gave me the excellent mentoring to me. And he advised me many things. And also, he gave me the very big challenge. He asked me, Uchinaga-san, what kind of position you would like to realize as the final goal in IBM? I said, maybe first line or second line manager. He said, that's too low. You should challenge higher and higher. And then finally, I said to him, OK, now I want to be, my desire is to be a top executive of IBM Japan and also that the vice president or general manager of the IBM Corporation of the development organization. He said, that's a great idea. You should write down this kind of the target and then you have to 
think about once a year. So this, this, is, this make me a change very significantly. At that time, I always compared with my colleagues, uh, male colleagues, and worry about today or tomorrow issues. But after I set my goal, I think about my strategy and uh, industry strategy, company strategy, and so on and so on. So that kind of things gave me a change. And also the company gave me the four different important jobs in order to understand the company itself. So sales organization, development organization, of course, and also that uh, uh, strategy organization, headquarter function, and also that the other uh, different type of the job. So these four different jobs within the one year, so one job is only three months, but by experience these kind of different jobs, I could understand the whole scheme of the company itself. So that was a very big help. If I continue the development only, I could not be an executive. And during these very tough six years or 10 years, and then I am now finally growing up to the top executive. But during these phases, I faced many difficulties, but the mentor by U.S. executive and the role model by U.S. female executives, these are the very strong help to me. Whenever I faced a difficulty, I always got the advice, encouragement, and also that the very big dream. So I think for the women, these two are very essential, I think. Next page, please. So anyway, third stage, I successfully, uh, after, the ten, after 10 years experience of the second stage, I'm now facing the third stage. And the company leaders and the global leader, I could realize by spending the first stage and the second stage in IBM, which gave me a lot of opportunity and also challenge, and then I could realize I can, cha I can challenge many things. So this kind of things was a very good career experience for me. And next page, please. So doing these kind of things, I retired from IBM. As I showed the previous page, I have experience to be an executive of the other companies as a global CEO, which was very excellent. But in the other side, I started non-profit organization just after my retirement from IBM because I thought, I realized diversity. The first step of diversity is women, and women's advancement is not just only women, but also this is for the company business strategy. So in order to be a challenging and innovative company, diversity is essential, especially in Japan. That's I thought. And then I started this organization, and a member of this organization is not women individual, it's a company. So 120 top, top Japanese company are member of this nonprofit organization. Next page, please. So in this, my, my NPO, we, we try to resolve the three issues of the women advancement. They, I don't want to talk about one by one, but these three is very essential, and I really uh, recognize that once that we resolve the lack of role models issues, women's mind issues, and work-life balance issues, especially old boys network issues are very difficult. Next page, please. And then for the networking, I created three layers of women's network. In the bottom line network, excuse me, Youngest network, I call the high potential network, almost 300 women uh, join this network, and the theme of this network is switch on. And the second layer is middle line managers network, it's so almost 300. Their theme is gear up to a higher position. And the top network, the executive network, is the theme of this network is give back to the younger people. The total theme of this network is, I said, women to the top. Because there are so many issues, but the biggest issue in Japan 
it's not just a law or the women's uh, uh, work-life balance, whatever. I think the biggest issue in Japan is a women, women's mindset. Next page, please. So, Amy, women's mindset is very difficult to change. Everybody said that. But the, I ask the four questions whenever the network is started. And do you aiming to the top, wants to be a leader, wants to work globally and have more than five loads? For these four questions, I ask all members, women members. And the blue number is upon entry, answer is yes, percentage. One year later, same question I ask them and then answer is yes, is red number. 93.2% women say, yes, I want to be a top. So it's completely different, their mindset. Next page, please. So anyway, I think in Japan, it's a very tough situation. There are huge issues of the women's advancement. But very important point is to change the women's mindset. And also another most important point, which I'm now running today, is old boys network attack. We should resolve, break the old boys network. Four years ago, I started these activities and I created male network. And male, that means the middle line manager of the big company is creating a network. And I let them understand the value, uh, excuse me, let them understand the barrier of the old boys network. And uh, very surprisingly, they are, they are talking about issues after the six months discussion they are suddenly change their mind and they recognize the value of the old boys network. So let's work together and create network, not only women, but also the old boys network breaking the network that I would like to realize. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you so much, Ikjinaga san. Um, I love the idea that we're, we're trying to change mindsets for both women and men, and that very powerful idea of how we can work with male champions and mentors to further women's ex uh, experiences as well. Um, if I could take the opportunity to ask the chair's prerogative the first question. Um, so, you know, among your many awards was the Prime Minister's commendation for efforts towards the formation of a gender equal society. Um, um, this, of course, was in recognition of your important contributions um, in this area. Thank and you. as we all know, yes, it's really terrific. Um, and as we all know, Prime Minister Abe has recently stepped down. Womenomics was really at the at the core of, of one of his platforms and a big area of work. Um, what impact do you think it has, reflecting on his long tenure, when the highest levels of a government focus on advancing gender equality? And why is policy change important to change? change gender norms in society. Okay, I think the Prime Minister Abe clearly understand the value of the gender uh, promotion, uh, um, clearly understand the value of the women's advancement. And also this is a very big contribution for the election of the uh, uh, government and uh, and but this, he is the first prime minister to talk about this kind of policy uh, as one of the strategic items. So I'm so pleased uh, that he said such kind of things. And then at the, in Japan, completely changed the mindset. And many top executives, they are willingly or unwillingly, they recognize he has to follow the government guidance. So in Japan, many Japanese uh, business executives and business firm is very, very uh, follow uh, honestly and follow the guidance. So I think this is the biggest uh, uh, power to change the Japanese uh, culture and you know, strat uh, situation and so on. So I hope the next Prime Minister, Suga, I hope he continue this kind of the priority and uh, movement. And he is uh, talking about the importance of gender and also the importance of the digital transformation. I think the gender uh, innovation and gender improvement is tightly coupled with the uh, uh, digital transformation. If the digital transformation would be improved, 
women's advancement will be uh, instantly improved. That's, I think, because of the, my background is uh, IT. But, uh, so then, uh, in Japan, the government guidance and the government rule regulation is, um, is effectively, effectively influenced to the many business firm, society, and so on and so on. That's my impression. And also, I really want to uh, support this kind of movement in a government. Thank you so much. That's, that's so insightful. Um, as I get ready to turn the floor over to uh, Dr. Lee, I just want to remind everyone, please do use the Q&A box to submit your questions. Now, Dr. Lee, of course, in addition to being a leading science scientist in biochemistry and proteomics, um, she's going to be reflecting on her leadership of several women-centered <laughs> networks for women in STEM and what she's learned as a longtime professor. So thank you so much, uh, Kangzhou. Okay, thank you very much for a kind introduction. It was a very, uh, thank you very much for a kind invitation. I'm so pleased to be here to share my story with you. And in the previous session, Korean statistics, statistics in STEM, women in STEM are presented. I'll be presenting more personal activities combined with the, the uh, network. Uh, this Talk, I'm going to talk about the collective wisdom through women in STEM networks. Next slide. And I just uh, personally, uh, personal elements of my career in women in STEM, because in my generation, my mom is a typical housewife, always told me the financial independence is the most important part in my life. And she really supports us. And that's main part, but this problem is quite solved in our Korean society now. And also I love to study chemistry and physics in my high school because the high school teacher is very great for uh, induce our interest in science. With that reason, uh, the Korean society really push the, the high school science and uh, science lectures. We are very uh, concentrated on it. And after graduating my master's degree, I wanted to become a public official in FDA, but there was a significant gender discrimination. And finally, I tried to keep going on study on PhD as an expert. But it, it's 1980s, and I experienced another keep uh, gender discrimination in Korea, even after postdoctoral fellow. And I was so disappointed. And we, I started to think about how to change this our environment. And I, I, with my colleagues, started to work by organizing a network of Korean women in science and engineering, KWSE, a science park in the Daejeon area. We have about 20 uh, research institutes in that area. And after then that, I moved to Iwa Women's University as a professor. I, I'm very lucky. I'm very lucky person because the Iwa is the only place in Korea at that time to encourage the women to do our best. And with that reason, I have many experience in our university and that make me going on in many careers. And next slide. As you see, this one is the KWSC conducted a study with the Asia Pacific Nation Networks on gender ba barrier and found that Korean young women in STEM in here they can have uh, experienced the gender barrier. However, the Korean men didn't. That's very big difference in between men and women. Next slide, you can see the, that uh, the perception of a gender barrier by future scientists in Korea. And we found that the significant differences between youngsters perceive gender barrier by women, especially in employment and wage. In next slide, with this region, uh, as you can see this study and we realize that the power of a women's network through KWSE, because women can collaborate with each other, 
and embracing each other and support each other. Because the organizations, not individuals, organization can persuade the society more easily than women in STEM, create important knowledge and provide diversity to the society. I think that's most important part. And the KWSE, the organization, started to participate more actively in the international activity, like the INRES, International Network of Women Engineers and Scientists. In next slide, you can see that the KWSE, I was a, a sixth president, and we established the 1993 in KWSE. We started with the 250 women in STEM. Nowadays, about 2,000. Also, at that time, it was not contract-based employee a lot. But we are very lucky to have a good, a good president, Tejun Kim. He really what, encouraged the women to do our best. And then at that time, uh, we have the KWSC play a key role in, in activating the affirmative action fostering and supporting women in science and technology. That's very big part. Also in 2005, in, we have uh, the international activities with the uh, EQUEST, it's the Invest uh, conference in Korea. Also, we started many, many activities for supporting the teachers in science in high school, or we have uh, the young, young women scientist, scientist camp which is very uh, empowering them to keep going on. Very good way to do it. In next slide. And we try to connect with uh, internationally because I was the president of INWEST, International Network of Women, and Women Engineers and Scientists. It's a global network and it's a nonprofit corporation based on Canada. Also the 2008, INWES became an NGO partner of UNESCO, and UNESCO supports many uh, women in STEM in Africa and Asia. Also, in during my presidency, 2017, INWES was granted the ECOSAC, Economic and Social uh, Council, consultative status in UN, and with that reason, many women just keep going on to have activity in, in UN uh, field. But in 2011, but international means it's quite international. We have ALPA to OMEGA, it's a very wide spectrum. It's really hard to get together sometimes, it's a big difference. But we can learn each other. But with that reason, I have a, a op established a regional network and support the creation of a new Asian Pacific Nation Network. With one interesting thing is that INVEST really support the uh, organ creation of a new organization in Mongolia, Vietnam, and Taiwan, and Sri Lanka, and Nepal. It then makes them be really uh, encourage them to do their work activities in, inside their countries. But sometimes they don't know how to do it. Uh, invest play really critical roles to to promote them to do it. But it's a very impressive advances were happen in over there. Also with that reason based on that we have African regional network, Invest Europe, and we have the Invest MENA, Middle East and North Africa. But we realize they have all different problems. But same thing is the woman in STEM is but less uh, recognized. That's the same same thing. Next slide. Next, next slide, please. With that reason, we just uh, try to give some many messages because uh, woman, we really we. We means women in STEM really like to share our experience, passion, time, energies, and 
care for each other and learn from each other, and which will empower us as a woman scientist and engineers. With that reason, we really hope this world becomes safer by being faithful to basics, more peaceful by pursuing collaboration rather than competition. Also, we try to sustainable by producing the new knowledge because we can do it, and gender equal place by straightening the crooked things. And we really like to reach enough to keep next generations growing for their uh, life by sharing our resources. I think it, that's really possible because we try to open our heart and reaching our hands out and then we can collaborate each other. I think that's the only way to change our uh, environment having many kinds of gender gaps. In next slide. But I think that the number of women in STEM is at the most important part because in Korea, in my generation, the number is very low, but the number is increasing. That makes a really big difference. But I'm in Iwa. Iwa Women's University is a very special place because the uh, male and female professor is one-to-one. -one. I think this is the only place to have the, that kind of ratio in research-oriented university. I think that's very special. Also, the Iwa has, offers many STEM fields including the natural science, pharmacy, engineering, and medical school. And that makes the graduate every year more than 1,200 women in every year. Also, with that reason, as a, nowadays it's a very knowledge-based society, we really push them to go, keep going on in graduate school. And when I was a dean of graduate school, I really sub, tried to support the students in STEM in graduate school and give, uh, open the graduate fair to provide the information on graduate school in STEM area. And that makes really big difference. And also we try to collaborate the EY University with the KWSE for young women's camp. In next slide, and it's a kind of a graduate fair. So many women get together to keep going on. And then makes them to encourage to go on. Next slide. And next year, I was uh, uh, advisor to the President Moon for science and engineering because uh, luckily our President Moon is quite perceived the importance of diversity of women. And with that reason, I was employed as an expert. In that case, we try to establish the many national agenda and strategies during the process. And I try to do my best, include the women scientists and engineers in my high official government committees. Then makes them really different. Also, in that case, they know, they know how the government recognizes how smart of the women in STEM area to keep going on in different way like the old boys club and then makes really different it's it's quite giving more high standard for the uh, product and with that reason we try to have the uh, database for women in stem for high government positions next slide and Based on my personal experiences, and we can summarize that, I think the network. Network are important for uh, setting the gender norm in STEM. I think we try to help each other, and we need some more collective wisdom. Also, we try to support network, and just government support the network. In Korea, they support the network. And that's very effective way to uh, closing the gender gap. Also, I think after COVID-19, we will change many, many norms. But I, I hope we can we can have more more positive uh, gender norm rather than the negative way. But we many people worry about it. With that reason, in our university, Iwa, 
really try to make how to change the social way and some education type. And I think that's one way to do it. Okay, thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you so much, Kangjo. I really appreciate um, you sharing all of this uh, insight with us. And particularly, you know, I think for many of us in the audience, it's just, it's so fascinating to hear more about IWA. You know, it is the premier university for women's education in Korea. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if you could just share some thoughts with us briefly about, you know, what, what's valuable about a single sex education, you know, an all girls school in terms of changing some of these norms that can really deter young women women from getting into and staying in STEM? Yes. Our old uh, uh, professors like, told us that Iwa will be, Iwa Women's University will be Iwa University when the, the Congress men and women is one-to-one. -one. We will change it because that the Korean society is quite still very male-oriented society. With that reason, the Many, in many cases, the people don't want to but keep going on or encourage them. It's, it's very different. With that reason, we have some special value on women's university in Korea now because the graduates are very different because it's, they, are not, they don't know how uh, to go in the old boys club because they are different. And with that reason, they really keep keep talking what they want to do in our society. With that reason, a lot of conflict in between in nowadays. But I think that very positive way to change the society with the women's norm. I think with that reason, the Iwa is a very special and unique place to, to keep going on that kind of tradition. Thank you so much, Kangja. That's really very helpful to think more about. Um, and with that, I'm going to turn over to Ying Worries Lin. Um, she's going to share some of her personal and professional experiences of transforming gender norms, both as a young woman, herself studying STEM, and then crafting a, a very dynamic career. So thank you. Hey, everyone. I'm Ying Worries. And very honored to be here, and especially speaking after um, esteemed uh, Uchi Nagasan and Dr. Lee. So, uh, let me uh, next slide, please. So, uh, let me uh, first start uh, by sharing some of the gender norms that I have experienced throughout my life, from growing up in China to building a career in the U.S. So I came from a family with the, both of my parents and as the first generation of a, a college graduate in China. And they worked side by side all their lives and they expected my sister and I to do well in schools and, uh, you know, find good jobs. However, as modern as they could be in their generation, my dad used to sigh from time to time that he had no son to carry on his uh, uh, math and business aptitude. And my mom, for her own experience, confirmed that the girls just not as smart as boys. So as I followed their footsteps into computer science, once again, it came the reminder that, uh, you know, in such a fast-paced te technical field, trying to keep up with men is definitely beyond our reach. And uh, uh, keeping a steady uh, job, you know, could be uh, the best a girl could hope for. Not content with such a notion, I moved to the U.S. to pursue graduate study in the late 90s. So after I started working for Microsoft, I became a mom. Then I got a different culture shock. Instead of the norm uh, in mainland China where both parents work full time, many moms in the States are stay home moms. So my kids' friends' moms dropped hints that I should feel guilty about leaving my two young kids in others' care while I worked. And at work, Microsoft's uh, um, performance review system at the time, which is more than 15 years ago, punished me because I took uh, this maximum time off allowed by the company benefits in order to take care of my babies. To my manager, 
you know, for sure, I could not have performed as well as those spend 10 plus hours per day at work and did not take a month's long leave. At home, inadvertent uh, reverse the roles also caused a lot of friction in my relationship with my, then, uh, my then husband. In his eyes, being a woman, despite uh, taking on the sole financial responsibilities, I ought to do a traditional woman's share of housework and a child rearing, even though that would take require more than all the spare time I had outside work. So uh, some of the gender norms you may be familiar with and some uh, you may experience uh, or encounter sooner or later. Being the emerging leader or leader as we all are, how do we break such so-called gender norms? Next slide, please. So we got to start from recognizing what the gender norms are. They are behaviors and attributes that the society defines as appropriate for, for us as women. Does that mean they are true? For me, having the top grades in schools, always meeting or exceeding goals set at work, never saying no to tough work no matter how challenging they were, always willing to help others and caring about co-workers' well-being, all these facts gave me confidence that I can and will always do the next job well. Seeing the gender norms as a false narrative empowered me to question why I was not recognized for my contributions, why I was passed over for big opportunities, or better yet, encouraged me to ask for that big opportunity before it was given to somebody else. Contrary to what my parents predicted that uh, me not being able to keep up with the rapid re evolution of technology simply because I was female, I've reaffirmed that I can keep learning and learn well. Furthermore, I recognized I was not alone in fighting against the gender norms. Despite the juggling between jam-packed work and family life, I've made constant efforts to search for role models and mentors to learn the skills I need to break gender norms or help me realize that I may be hiding behind the gender norms. I've surrounded myself with supporters, constructive uh, critics, cheerleaders, basically partners in both work and life. Today, I recognize my differences and I embrace them. As uh, now I know from mentors and through my own experience, that my difference still led me to success. And sometimes it was because of my differences that I succeeded. I may not be able to change others' perceptions. So instead, I focus on what's in my control. That includes taking pride in who I am and pass on the very important message to others in the workplace, as well as my own kids. All these individual learnings lead to one catchphrase, believe in myself. It may sound easy, but our inner critic constantly fights against it. And until today, I still have to constantly remind myself that I can do it. This is uh, where outside help, support can help tremendously. Next, please. Yeah, so uh, professional uh, networks now are proven to bring more professional opportunities to stimulate and inspire us to innovate and accelerate the career development individually and collectively. Yet women in tech at all levels, you know, lag our male peers in connections. In addition to finding those who I can look up to, I found I needed to find other women who were in similar shoes to support each other, to brainstorm uh, uh, solutions and provide connections. When, when we found we were not unique in our problems, those problems became solvable. And sometimes we realize those are, were not even our problems to begin with, not our problems to solve. Together, we have advanced our careers uh, steadily and become stronger in solving conflicts in both work and personal lives. For the tech company, when leadership sponsors and support women communities, more women are retained and the better product design quality are often observed. Okay. The next one. For more than 15 years, you know, I have built women communities from scratch or contributed to existing women community at a different organizational level in, inside Microsoft. I created the Women's Leadership Council and the Women Mentoring pamphlets to distribute at, the women's, uh, at Microsoft Women's Conferences and at the Microsoft subsidiary in China. 
I then joined the force with women from other high-tech companies in the Seattle region to found a senior women in tech community and contribute to a local ABI, Anita Borg chapter, volunteer at the local women in tech uh, events, as well as worldwide Chinese women computing community events. Through all these experiences, I, 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 I did identified eight best practices which I'm sharing here. First, we start with fostering personal passion and skill set. Next, we we'll need to be selfish about our own needs, be specific about the scope and don't overextend. Then writing on our passion, we need to be selfless with our knowledge and the time. We need to take initiative to initiate context, engage in open-minded discussions about alignments among individual, community, and organizational needs. Uh, be creative and yet leverage existing frameworks, reinforce but not uh, reinvent the wheel, have a clear awareness of known corporate uh, assets as well as individual members' skill set. We got to stay uh, organized, set time-bound plans with checkpoint and key met success metrics, then reevaluate the results against goals and uh, really just plans are needed. We treat uh, in the building community like we treat any uh, project work. And we all to actively practice leadership, interpersonal awareness, and enhance our own self uh, soft skills. Last but not least, we need to have fun with each other. So next page. It's very busy, uh, uh, you know, visual slide to showcase my personal and growth and community growth as a result from continuous effort from breaking gender uh, norms, you know, starting from me, myself, you know, to the community I built next to me in, within my own company, to uh, the uh, regional and the uh, you know, global women computing uh, communities. The next. So after hearing about my personal story, what can you do as emerging or current female leaders in STEM fields? Believe in yourself. I've seen ama I'm being amazed over and over again by the intelligence, motivation, and drive demonstrated by the student candidates at the recruiting event, at the local tech events, you know, the interns, the new female hires, and Microsoft. We're definitely on the right track. Now, now as an old African proverb says, if you want to go far, go together. So it's never too late or too early to find and create or create a community for yourself and others who can benefit from it. Another old saying says, you know, the more you give, the more you get. So I would suggest to give at least as much as you get back. So for organizational or leaders, the next one, yeah, I suggest the three best practices to uh, consider. The first is gender norms are con unconscious bias at the best. Recognize that such a bias, provide trainings to bring awareness to them, then hold accountability against such a bias. Establish safe listening channels to report bias. And uh, the last one is to support a woman community, you know, um, at the beginning, it may appear to some that the leadership is playing favorites by offering extra support, you know, for women community. But it's really about bringing equity to women in tech workplaces, workspace. After falling years behind, you know, the that last point is applied to all. Is don't do not let gender gap discourage, you know, any organization from taking actions. You know, solve one problem at a time, making one small improvement at a time. They all add up steadily to create, create a more diverse, inclusive, and thriving organizational culture. Thank you so much, Ying. Uh, that's really inspiring um, words for us to end our panel presentations with. And, you know, I just, I want to follow up on something that, that you said. Um, you shared your personal story of, of being a little bit discouraged to get into the STEM fields by your parents. You said, this is a hard thing for girls to do. Um, and I'm wondering if you could just tell us, you know, now you have um, two teenagers with an interest in STEM. And, um, and so it's really, you know, the personal is political and it's very personal for you to have a stake in seeing STEM fields be inclusive. Um, so what barriers do you think we still need to address to ensure that we can really use each individual's talent regardless of gender? 
Yeah, um, so I talked about having confidence in ourselves, focusing uh, on what's in our control and build a community to normalize our response to the gender norms. Uh, what about the factors outside our control and need help from allies? and organizations, right? By organization, it could be school, company, government. For example, how do others recognize and embrace our differences? You know, uh, being emotional versus being passionate, right? seemingly indecisive versus being thorough, oh, appearing unfocused versus the ability to switch the context quickly in order to unblock different partners and make progress wherever possible. Right, so I talk about the, you know, the perception versus so what it, I think what's real. So conscious or unconscious bias based off gender norms need to be called out at real time by anyone involved and ideally examined and corrected as soon as possible, you know, either during or after each incident. So or, or we want to call out that this is uh, you know, for others uh, you know, to embrace our uh, different, uh, dividends and celebrate it celebrate those differences. Thank you. Uh, so thanks so much, Ying, and, and thank you to all of our really terrific panelists for some very thoughtful reflections. Um, we have some great questions in the in the Q&A, but before we do that, I, I think we'd like to hear from our audience again. As you've probably all noticed, the big um, the big commonality here is, is around networks. This is one of the things that all of our panelists are really emphasizing. So we have one question for you, um, and that's going to launch in the poll section, and the question is, I currently belong to a woman-focused network. A, yes, or B, no? We'll just be really interested to, to hear what your experience is. So please select your answer and press submit. And then we'll, we'll take a look at, at the answers. And I'm going to participate too. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and let's go ahead and close the poll and see what our, our answers are. Okay, so we have just a little bit more than half that say yes, they currently do. Um, so I think this is one of the things that we'll, we'll want to dig into more in this question and answer period. Um, the first question that I have is from Takehito Kamata who asked, um, I think this may be to Uchinaga-san, um, mm -hmm. based on your previous experience and observation, where could you find professional leaders, male or female, outside of the old boys network, who are open-minded to provide professional development opportunities for emerging professionals? So I think there's a lot of interest in, in hearing your success in finding a mentor. Uh, excuse me. So he asked the mentors? Um, where can you find professional leaders, oh. either male or female, who are open-minded to providing professional development for emerging professionals? Oh, okay. That person I already mentioned in my presentation, the key person for me to open up my mind is the, uh, Mr. Paul Dewar. He came from the Rochester, and then uh, he opened up any kind of the uh, soli any solutions uh, which is now resolving uh, the issues which I faced. And also in IBM Japan, uh, there are some executives, they help me a lot to have experience as the uh, corporate executive of IBM. So is that the answer to your questions? No, I think that's that's very helpful to just, you know, as as we're working through our professional lives to really be on the lookout for men and women in positions of influence who can support our work and mentor us because mentors can be so powerful. Yeah. So yeah. I think uh, the mentoring is uh, very essential. But my recommendation is a mentor should be a very senior person. At least in my experience, senior person might be a might be a very, uh, very good because uh, if I got a mentor from just uh, 
let us say one rank or two rank upper position. And sometimes my position is now competing finally with the mentor. So then I think uh, the highest position of the person in uh, engineering or whatever might be a very important as the mentor, especially in the development areas. I think uh, the mentoring is the very important factors uh, to, to encourage the women to challenge the new technology and so on and so on. So not only uh, business women, but also that the development of professional women, I think uh, mentoring is uh, very important. And uh, sometimes it's uh, very difficult to find out the best mentor by themselves. So maybe the company or organization will help the women to select the best women, uh, excuse me, best mentor uh, in that situation. So we need, they need, we need, women need help to find out the best mentors. So I think a corporation or organization should help them. Thank you. That's that's very helpful to think more about um, as we seek out mentors. Um, another question for everyone. Um, all, all three of you have really been integral in launching or fostering women-focused networks. So we've heard from JWIN, we've heard about KWSE, INWES, Level Up. Um, so maybe we can start with Ying. Um, could you share some recommendations for people who might be interested in launching their own woman-focused network or connecting with existing networks? What worked for you? Mm, both. <laughs> uh, so uh, how I uh, kind of co-founded uh, um, Level Up uh, is uh, you know, I uh, about four years ago. Uh, you know, after working in various works in Microsoft, now I realized uh, you know the retention of a woman is really not about the uh, you know uh, sticking to one org in the company or one company. It's really about the retention of women in the tech field. Uh, so I started looking around, uh, uh, you know, search online, or you know, back then I was you know to attend a THC, the Grace Hopper conference, and in the while we were thousands of miles away from Seattle, I ran into a woman come all the way from Seattle, different companies. Then we, you know connect on LinkedIn and we said uh, you know for my uh, previous uh, connection I look for uh, you know people working uh, in Google in Facebook in Amazon locally it just making cold calls and say do you have such a, a, a need in your company do you want to connect with me uh, and then it, it, you know it's a Surprisingly or not surprisingly, there's a lot of desire to or connect, you know, beyond just uh, you know, the woman in the same work group. Uh, so, uh, uh, and uh, um, yeah, so <laughs> that's uh, you're both uh, just uh, you make a determination, you need it. Uh, you know, always. Uh, and another thing is, uh, uh, right? You know, you anyone who joined a, a, a conference like this, uh, you know, we all become your network. Connect with us and say, how do I find? Uh, uh, you know, if you are uh, a Chinese background, how do I connect with Chinese uh, uh, computing in my area? Right? Maybe I have some suggestions. Or you know, you're coming to the Pacific Northwest, then uh, join us in the Seattle area. You know, your senior, your uh, junior uh, uh, career. Here, you know, all this ask questions. Uh, you know, the earlier question about uh, looking for a, a mentor. Uh, uh, you know, we have for the kind of different. Uh, um, I, I personally think anyone at the, any career stage can give us, uh, uh, you know, any some advice. So, however, we label them as coach mentor or sponsors, right? If we, you know, the people really executive is more like sponsors uh, uh, to us. Regardless, we can all learn from others. Uh, you know, keep your uh, eyes open, keep your ears open at a conference or at, at other uh, activities and find someone interesting, uh, uh, what they talk interesting, just reach out. You know, the worst is this, this can say no, now what? No, no, go move on to the next, uh, yeah. What a great positive attitude. I, I love that. <laughs> Joe, would you like to share some insights as well? I mean, you've been involved in, in really launching and, and nurturing two different networks. Yeah, because I, uh, I, I really agree with the Ying. 
Ing's opinion, because when you are young and you need a really direct collaboration or support from my neighbor, like the bioscience or physics, and but after you grow 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 up, and you need many what coordination between the area. In that case, the KWSC, because I start the KWSC because in the Daejeon area, in that case, we have all kinds of research institute in uh, Daejeon area. With that reason, we quite collaborate each other, nuclear power, nuclear power and some and standard and bioscience and like telecommunication, like that way. But that, that helps a lot afterward when you grew up in a certain area, you need, you need to collaborate with each other. With that reason, KWSC, we established the KWSC first, but we really but promote to the each field, like bioscience, some like uh, computer science, like that way. That makes the people uh, more comfortable when you are young or you need really direct what, support from them. And with that reason, I think both of them are quite useful for us. Thank you. So maybe a related question um, from the chat. So we're, we're talking about networks, and of course, not all networks require a lot of resources. As you've described, a lot of these networks are just about rolling up your sleeves and, and connecting with people and sharing what, what you know um, with each other and encouraging each other. But um, but there's also, I think, sometimes when, when resources might be important. So we have a question in the chat from Michael Green asking, are there ways these lessons about gender norms and STEM in Japan and Korea can be conveyed to other parts of Asia, perhaps through COICA or JICA, and of course in the United States, USAID has, has really done a lot of work in this area as well. So um, maybe we would start with you, Kongjo, because you had the global network in WES. So what, what can be the role of policymakers or, or aid agencies in trying to share these lessons about changing gender norms and increasing yes. women in STEM. Yes, I, I think that's very important because that uh, normally inside of a country, they really try to do what pursue the policymaker, but sometimes that is not working. But for example, in Mongolia, Mongolia, we, we, we met so many smart, but smart women in STEM area, but they really tried to do something, but they couldn't. But when they establish the uh, WISTEM, uh, it's very big organization. I was so surprised because only in three years, several hundred people get together and they have great power. We have some conference in Mongolia after three years, three years after their establishment, but they all get together and they said that all Mongolian people knows what the woman in STEM, like we STEM, because broadcast and policymakers just participate that kind of a conference, and they make that made a big difference in Mongolian women in STEM area. I was so happy with that. It, it was very impressed. With that reason, sometimes the international support is very good. Also. Like in African area, sometimes they, they don't have enough resources to support them. With that reason, we really push the UNESCO support the Nepal and some African countries to uh, what, promote their activities in women in STEM. And UNESCO also, when I was uh, president in US and Samsung Electronics, Samsung support the what African activities a lot. I really appreciate them. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Kangjo. I, I have to say the Asia Foundation has a permanent office in Mongolia, and I, I can really attest with what you are saying about those amazing women and, and how entrepreneurial and creative they are. So thanks for sharing those insights. But Chinaga san you've, you've done so much work in the policy world and, of course, also in the corporate world. And I imagine that corporations can also be part of sharing these lessons across Asia. So I, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this question. I think uh, 
uh, these kind of things is uh, very important. And even uh, women is creating a network in the STEM areas, but most important stakeholder is still cooperation. So corporate, especially not HR executive, the top of the corporate, the CEO or CEO, these kind of person's mindset or the gender norm is the most important, that's I think. So then I really want to expand these kind of the activities not within just only in Japan, but also in the global basis. But it's very difficult. So then I finally asking each Japanese corporation to involve their subsidiaries in the global basis. So they have their own network within the company. So I really want to utilize the US branch office or Europe or China or Korea. That's I really want to expand these kind of things but also in uh, uh, APEC or such kind of activities also helping us. So I think not all, I, I believe the women's network is essential, but not just only an uh, individual network. I think stakeholders network is essential. So I really want to ask Japan, uh, Asian Foundation just to focus on this kind of the activity. I really want to work together to, to to expanding the, the understanding of the need of diversity in uh, many Japanese uh, uh, business farms. That's why I would like to ask you to help us. Oh, well, thank you. I, I know this is an issue that's so um, high on our priority list as well. So I'll, I'll look forward to the collaborations. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'm keeping an eye on the time, so I, I think I'll have to give Ying the last word on this question. And, and Ying, I know that, that you've been very involved, um, you know, as a Chinese American and working with women in China in STEM in trying to foster these networks. So I'd love to get your thoughts on this question as well. I only had uh, the experience working in the corporate world. Uh, so I uh, found uh, what's successful is, uh, uh, you know, start first start by realizing a uh, problem, you know, when we, ex we live it, we experience it, and we'll be creative to, uh, uh, and be bold to propose the solutions. Like, and ultimately, we do need the support from uh, the corporate, you know, and then uh, really incorporate that, uh, you know, the creative solutions, building a community, uh, you know, giving, um, uh, again, the quote unquote, the extra support to women community, uh, you know, really uh, uh, integrate the, uh, those kind of uh, activity into kind of the corporate fabric. You know, this is uh, a, a given, uh, only then you can be, uh, scalable and sustainable. Otherwise, you know, women are always doing this thing on our own. We do it for ourselves and, uh, you know, nobody else has a skin in the game. And uh, so uh, I, I think the uh, kind of gra grassroots and the creativity and uh, in the driven by uh, a, a few and then a snowball to uh, many more need to uh, be recognized and need to be integrated with the corporate policy. Thank you. And and finally, just a, a very warm thank you to our incredible panelists. This has been such a, a rich conversation. I, I can't believe we're at the end of, of our discussion. Um, I, I really want to thank you all for sharing both your personal and your professional experiences. I think we've all learned a lot. Um, and also just share a very warm thank you to our interpreters for all of their hard work during this discussion and to our organizers of the summit and to everyone who's joined us and, and spent the time to think through these issues with us. Uh, please join us tomorrow for our final day of the Trilateral Summit on Women's Leadership in STEM. And uh, have, a, have a wonderful evening or day, depending <laughs> on, on where you are in the world. Uh, let's keep the conversation going and make sure that we're building up our networks as we do so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Okay, bye. 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 Thank you.